Hi, Dr. Matthew Weiner, I'm a bariatric surgeon at the Michigan Weight Management Institute, and I'm going to talk to you today about how to choose the right bariatric surgery for you. There's three options we have today. We've got the gastric bypass, the sleeve gastrectomy, and adjustable gastric banding. And we're going to go over each of these procedures and what the benefits and risks are of each so that you can make the best choice for you. Now, each of these surgeries has a different metabolic effect. And so when we look at the changes that will happen in your metabolism in driving the weight loss, the, the gastric bypass is going to have the most dramatic changes. The sleeve gastrectomy, the second amount of, of changes, and the adjustable gastric banding, typically the least amount of, of metabolic effect. So if we only have a certain amount of metabolic effect in the gastric banding, then we're going to need to make up for it by changing our diet significantly. And what I've done is I've essentially broken our, our uh, dietary program into 11 dietary changes that you can make. This is outlined in our, uh, in our book, A Pound of Cure. And if you follow all 11 of them, what you'll see is that this is a very dramatic shift in your diet that's required. With the, with the ga adjustable gastric banding, typically it's, it's necessary to make around 9 or 10 of all 11 changes in order to, to um, reach the maximum metabolic impact that will make up for that difference that the, that the surgery is not providing. When we look at the sleeve gastrectomy, it's only 8 of these 11 changes. And the gastric bypass, with the most dramatic metabolic effect, still requires six of these changes. I think this is an important concept that this does not, the gastric bypass does not allow you to eat freely, even though it has the most significant metabolic effect. If you're going to reach that goal weight and maintain it for the rest of your life, there still are requirements of eating lots of fruits and vegetables, of uh, moving your body and walking and staying active, of eating nuts, not junk food, and minimizing the amount of grains and, start, and, and uh, wheat products that you eat. Um, but it does have the most effect and then because of that requires the least modification of your diet. When we look at weight loss, again, this is, this is shown true, that we see the most weight loss with the gastric bypass. With the sleeve gastrectomy, we see a little bit less, typically around 15 to 20 pounds less of weight loss than we do with the gastric bypass. But an important thing to note here is that we don't have the long-term data on the weight loss after the sleeve gastrectomy the way we do with the gastric bypass. I believe that it's going to stay right there and that if we drew this line out, it's going to go out to the end. But I don't have the evidence in the medical literature because we just haven't done enough of these surgeries and tracked them for a long enough time to be able to prove that. And then the, the adjustable gastric banding or the lap band procedure uh, offers the least amount of weight loss of the three operations. So when we talk about how to decide, I think there's certain patients who will benefit from one procedure um, over the other. So the first group of patients, and, and this is who I really strongly recommend a gastric bypass in, are those patients who have diabetes, particularly if you have insulin-dependent diabetes or are being told or talked to by your physician about adding insulin or adding some of these other in, um, injectable medications like a Victoza uh, into your diabetes regimen. Diabetes is such a terrible disease that we have to give you and offer you the most significant amount of treatment for that, and that is the gastric bypass, more so than the sleeve gastrectomy and the um, adjustable gastric banding. The other group of patients who I recommend a, a gastric bypass in are those who suffer from severe gastroesophageal reflux disease or heartburn. Now, all of us have heartburn from time to time, but some patients, about 5% of us, suffer from very severe heartburn, heartburn that wakes us up at night, heartburn that if we don't take our acid-reducing um, medication can ruin our day. We have to leave parties early and it limits our social, um, social activities. If you're in this group of patients where your heartburn is, is interfering with your quality of life, then the absolute best operation is a gastric bypass. And that's the reason the other two operations can actually worsen your heartburn. And because we're doing the surgery to improve your life, to improve your health, to improve your quality of life, if we do it but make your heartburn worse, we've accomplished nothing. And so in those groups of patients, because the gastric bypass is an anti-reflux operation, it prevents the acid from going up into the esophagus by the new reconstruction, it's absolutely the best choice um, in that group of patients. Patients who have a difficult time losing any weight, I can lose 5 or 10 pounds and that's it, and then it stops. They have a very stubborn and slow metabolism. I push toward the maximal therapy. That's a gastric bypass. Patients who have limited mobility, typically that goes hand-in-hand hand with a slow uh, metabolism. 
also a gastric bypass. It is the most effective surgery. There is a small risk. We're now doing these procedures with a 1 to 2 per, uh, percent serious complication rate. Very, very low. Less than 1 in 50 of my patients are having a severe complication that would require reoperation, an ICU stay, or a dramatic alteration in the typical 2 to 3 week recovery that we see. So even though there is, we're doing this exceptionally safely, we still have to recognize there is a small risk. With the gastric band, the results of the gastric band are very variable, meaning I have some patients, about 10% of my patients, who lose a tremendous amount of weight, who the surgery works amazingly for. These patients end up being like a size 4 or size 6 if they're women um, and have a great result, but it's impossible for me to predict who they are. Anecdotally, I think they're younger and they're more active. They work very hard at their weight loss, exercise a tremendous amount. Uh, and these patients want initially the safest procedure. But as we talked in, in the seminar video, the long-term results of the gastric banding does require a significant rate of reoperation. Somewhere estimated between 10 to 20 percent of all gastric band patients will need another surgery at some time in their life. And that second surgery typically is as risky, if not riskier, than the gastric bypass or sleeve gastrectomy. So even though the initial surgery is very, very safe, the safety profile in the long run of the gastric band is really not holding up to what our hopes were. And so for that reason, I caution patients um, against this procedure based on the variability of, of their um, results as well as this rate of reoperation down the road. And then finally, the sleeve gastrectomy. Any patient who's had previous abdominal surgery, now not had their gallbladder out or their appendix removed, but a major abdominal surgery through a large incision um, that's resulted in either a temporary colostomy or large sheets of mesh that have been placed through the abdominal wall. These typically are multiple surgeries, required prolonged stays in the hospital. Um, these patients typically will not be able to undergo a laparoscopic gastric bypass, but still can have the benefits of laparoscopy using the small incisions when we do a sleeve gastrectomy. And so in this group of patients, I've found that I'm still able to do a, a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy where I would never be able to do the procedure laparoscopically with a gastric bypass. And now when we're talking about open surgery through a big incision with lots of previous scar tissue versus a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, we've got a dramatic difference in terms of the risks and complications of the procedure, and I'm going to steer these people toward a sleeve gastrectomy. Patients with a faster metabolism able to lose a little more weight because a sleeve gastrectomy does not offer quite the same metabolic advantage that we get with a gastric bypass. Patients with a lower BMI, typically less than 50 is what the literature shows. I usually start cautioning against the sleeve gastrectomy around a BMI of 45. My experience is, is that patients with a, with a BMI above 45 are, are typically not quite as satisfied with the amount of weight that they lose as the gastric bypass patients at that same BMI. Again, um, no heartburn. If you have recurrent kidney stones, not you've ever had a kidney stone, but you have a kidney stone that lands you in the emergency room once every six months or even once a year that's been problematic and interfering with your lifestyle, gastric bypass can worsen that. And so a sleeve gastrectomy is going to have less impact on, on um, changing the content of your urine and your blood to facilitate stone formation. So I'm going to push these group, group of patients more toward a sleeve gastrectomy. And again, with the risk of the sleeve, all in all, the complication rate is lower with the sleeve, but when we talk about those scary complications in the ICU requiring reoperations, the very small percentage of, of patients that undergo these procedures, but when we compare these, these, these worst case scenarios, we see a very similar rate of, um, of these case scenarios in a sleeve gastrectomy group as we do in the gastric bypass group. So when we're looking at overall uh, mortality and real kind of worst case, there's not a huge difference. But when we look at all, all complications, we, we do see a lower rate with the sleeve gastrectomy. So in summary, patients who are diabetic or who have severe acid reflux, lifestyle altering acid reflux, should strongly consider the gastric bypass. Patients with a lower BMI less than 45 or extensive previous abdominal surgery with multiple adhesions multiple reoperations, lots of scars across the abdomen, these patients should definitely strongly consider a um, sleeve gastrectomy. And then adjustable gastric banding offers highly variable results. Sometimes it's the right answer for patients, but I, I, I want to make sure that you understand that, that, that what is going to happen, the amount of weight that you're going to lose is highly unpredictable. 
If you'd like to learn more about bariatric surgery or our non-surgical weight loss programs, you can come to our website, www.drmatthewiner.com, or call us at 248-413-2670. Thank you very much for your attention.